hip extension goniometry. Hello, Ms. Gordon. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. Good. My name is Megan McNerney. I'm going to be your physical therapist. Today I'll be testing your hip extension. Can I have you lie on your stomach, please? Place the subject in the prone position. With both knees extended and the hip to be tested in zero degrees of abduction, adduction, and rotation. A pillow may be placed under the abdomen for comfort, but no pillow should be placed under the head. Would you like a pillow under your stomach, Ms. Gordon? I'm okay. I'm just going to put this towel over you to protect your modesty. And I will be feeling for some landmarks underneath of your shorts, okay? So right now I'm feeling for the ASIS and PSIS so that I can stabilize the pelvis when I test her. I also have to feel for the greater trochanter. Center fulcrum of the goniometer over the lateral aspect of the hip joint, using the greater trochanter of the femur for reference. Align proximal arm with the lateral midline of the pelvis. Align distal arm with the lateral midline of the femur, using the lateral epicondyle as a reference. Okay, so I've found her greater trochanter, and I'm aligning the axis with that. The stationary arm is bisecting the pelvis, and the movable arm is lined up with her femur with the lateral epicondyle as the distal landmark. Ms. Corden, can I have you raise your leg toward the ceiling without bending your knee? Extend the hip by raising the lower extremity from the table. Back down a little bit. Maintain the knee in extension throughout the movement to ensure that tension in the two joint rectus femoris muscle does not limit the hip extension range of motion. And relax. The end of the range of motion occurs when resistance to further motion of the femur is felt and attempts at overcoming the resistance cause anterior tilting of the pelvis and or extension of the lumbar spine. So without letting her pelvis rotate, I measured her active range of motion for zero to six degrees of extension. For her passive range of motion, I'm going to put her into sideline for ease of maneuvering and for the, um, make it easier on my arms. Ms. Corden, can I have you lie on your left side, please? An alternative method for hip extension goniometry is to have the patient in sideline. Can I have that way? Hmm? That's okay. Just scoot back towards this side of the table. Okay. And I'm just going to drape you one more time. Okay. I'll be using the same landmarks for the passive range of motion measurement. So I'm finding her greater trochanter, which I'm going to bend her knee and just rotate a little bit to feel for the greater trochanter. Sorry, that wasn't loud enough. Okay. Rotation of the femur. Now I'm feeling again for the ASIS and PSIS. Okay, so I have my axis and my stationary arm. I'm stabilizing at the pelvis, and I'm going to take her into extension passively. The end feel is firm because of tension in the anterior joint capsule and the iliofemoral ligament, and to a lesser extent, the ischiofemoral and pubofemoral ligaments. Tension in various muscles that flex the hip, such as the iliopsoas, sartorius, tensor fascia lata, gracilis, and adductor longus, may contribute to the firm end feel. Okay, I am measuring this at 7 degrees, so I would document her passive range of motion at 0 to 7 degrees, which we can assume that her active here equals her passive, because that 1 degree is within the measurement error. Thank you, Ms. Corden. Thank you. Ben and Associates did research looking at the reliability of hip extension goniometry. They found that intra-rater reliability was less reliable than intra-rater reliability. However, once standardizing the goniometry measurements for locations of the fulcrum and distal and proximal arms, it improved reliability for both intra- and intra-raters. Uh, Kilgore, McNair, and Stott looked at hip extension validity as a goniometry measurement, and they found that it was valid relative to other joint measurements. However, the major source of error they found was 
knowing when you are reaching the end range of joint motion? Normal range of motion for hip extension in adults is 30 degrees as determined by the AMA and 20 degrees as determined by the AAOS. Therefore, we've concluded that uh, Ms. Corden has limited range of motion for hip extension, so I want to determine whether this is due to hip extensor weakness or hip flexor tightness. So I might follow this up with a Thomas test for iliopsoas and rectus femoris tightness. To prevent the patient's leg from adapting or internally rotating. Uh, because according to the AMA, normal hip extension range of motion is 30 degrees. According to the AAOS, it's 20 degrees. Ms. Corden had a lot less than that, so we determined she has limited hip extension range of motion. I would further test to tease out whether this was due to muscle weakness or muscle tightness. So I could do the Thomas test to test for iliopsoas and rectus femoris tightness, and I could also manual muscle test the hip extensors such as the gluteus maximus. We also just wanted to add, while you're doing goniometry measures of hip extension, uh, X Strand, as we talked about earlier, and his associates uh, clarified that in extension, in particular, goniometry will tend to uh, overestimate range of motion. So you need to pay attention to pelvic rotation and make sure that you're palpating the landmarks accurately. Uh, to be sure you are on the correct landmarks, you can internally rotate the um, femur to find the greater trochanter and have the patient contract their abdominals to make sure they're in a posterior pelvic tilt, then anterior pelvic tilt so you can confirm the motion of the ASIS and PSIS.